this year we're celebrating 30 years on the river, 30 years of Riverlings history. And growing up here, I, I may have known there was a river, but uh, we didn't venture to visit the French Broad River. Well, as I grew up, there was very little use of the river, particularly from a recreational standpoint. I think it was mostly used as a, a recycling area along the river, as industrial uh, disposal, and uh, I think it was almost hidden. When I moved here in the 80s, um, nobody came down to the river. It was not a place you'd want to be. You certainly didn't want to get on the river. No one got in the river. When I came up here, Friday night entertainment was to go to the speedway and watch the cars uh, tear each other up. And then the ne next weekend, you could get in your canoe and come down the river and watch them plant the car bodies in the side of the bank so that the river bank wouldn't wash away. When we first started this program, what we were worried about was the only time the French fraud was mentioned if they found a body or something in it. Back in 1955, Wilma Dykeman published her book, The French Broad, and in it she had a, a famous chapter called Who Killed the French Broad? And it talked about the degradation of the, of the river from pristine waters that they had been originally, or the, actually the whole river shed, pristine waters to horrible, dead waters, fish were gone. That is not sustainable to life, whether it be human life or fish, water birds, uh, plants, they can't live in that. So I think that's why reclaiming the French Broad is so important to all of us because it makes, makes the character of our, our city, but it makes it healthy for us and a place that we all can come and enjoy and love. I see River Link as, you know, here the Clean Water Act happened in 1972, which is a really important piece of legislation, but like River Link started the dialogue, I mean, really got it going uh, with the predecessor of the French Broad River Foundation. But River Link, you know, grabbed that just kind of starting place and, and we're like, uh, made it happen. I, I think River Link had a clear vision of the future. And also Riverlink had the gumption to seize that vision, to do something about it. I think of the mission of Riverlink pretty simply. It's really to promote the health of this river and its tributaries. And when I say health, it starts with the environmental health. That's number one. But Riverlink's really all about protecting and promoting the economic viability of this river. And also the river as, I think, a social and cultural institution, something we don't often think about. But this river, and historically, rivers have always been sites of human activity. Riverlink is really about uh, creating a resource that is clean and healthy and getting people to it, in essence. And everything we do sort of revolves around that. Uh, we uh, help to build parks and greenways along the river. Uh, we help with uh, stream restoration, stormwater controls. Uh, stormwater is a huge issue in our mountain community. You know, it all runs downhill. Empowering volunteers, that's a, a big part of it because really, if, until the community demands change, it doesn't really happen. And um, so empowering the 2,700 volunteers a year that we do to get out and remove exotic invasives and pick up trash and help with stream restorations and help put on events that enable other folks to come to the river, young and old. In the last 30 years, it's been remarkable what has happened. Uh, the water quality has improved a great deal. You can swim in the French Broad and not be afraid. It could be used as a drinking source. I remember our very first park was Gene Webb Park. And you look at Gene Webb Park now and you say, that's not much of a park. It's this little place tucked underneath the Haywood Street Bridge. And yes, it has river access and a picnic table, but that's about all, and a few parking places, but that's about all it has. We were so proud of Gene Webb Park when we got it because that was the first river access in the city of Asheville. Now we have river access from the headwaters 
on into Madison County. And here in Asheville, we have just fabulous parks. And we're talking about park plans and that sort of stuff. And that's just really one element. That's a, the recreational element of the entire, of the entire plan because the, the long-term key and success of the Riverfront plan is the economic development that goes along with it. Buildings at uh, upper levels uh, are being turned into uh, housing or uh, businesses moving back into buildings that were abandoned years ago. Riverlink really helped over the, over the past 30 years lay the groundwork for the current economic revitalization of the River Arts District. Um, it consolidated 20 years of, of planning uh, in, in concert with the City of Asheville, the Chamber of Commerce and others in the uh, 2003 Wilma Dykeman Riverway plan. And without that plan, uh, you wouldn't see the current $15 million worth of funding from the Department of Transportation and other sources for the investment that's going on. You know, for a long time, the entire riverfront area uh, here in Asheville was zoned heavy industrial. Uh, and it meant that you really couldn't have retail, you couldn't have residential, and getting that zoning designation changed to mixed use, and now we're going to more of a, uh, a form-based code look at the river. Uh, we're acknowledging that the river is a place where people want to live and work. You know, water's magic. If you go to any city that is lucky enough to have a river, never mind two rivers that run through it, uh, they figured out a way how to get people down there to live, to work, to play, to recreate, to eat, to shop, uh, to enjoy, just to experience the river. And, uh, you know, it's been a long time since we've done that as a community, but uh, we're getting back there. To me, to have taken the river and made it into a, a really beautiful resource and practical resource is the legacy that I think we are leaving for the next generation. And they're using it. I've been a volunteer for close, close to 30 years at Riverlink. I have been on the board a couple of different times, and I've been a donor for a long time. This organization is a very lean organization, and one of the reasons I'm a donor is that I know the money that I give goes directly into the awesome programs that we have. So, um, you know, whether it be turning junkyards into uh, playgrounds or making greenways or conserving land along the river, having educational programs, that's what the donor's money goes to. 30 years ago, Riverside Drive wasn't a street you'd drive down. Uh, Amboy Road, people didn't probably know where it was unless they were going to the racetrack. Um, and on a, on a bright sunny day, to drive along the river and to see you know, literally thousands of people using it has got to be one of the most exciting things that could ever happen to all of us who have been involved uh, in the river. Um, to go to the playground and see young children of a whole new generation you know, here we are 20 years later, uh, using the swings and on the playground, enjoying it. To see people walking their dogs and out with their kids and uh, playing basketball or playing bocce ball or just sitting by the river and reading a book or having a picnic, um, strolling along. Um, I don't think there's any bigger high than uh, any of us get uh, that have been involved for a long time than it's just seeing people reconnect with the river and it, people using it and having a good time and enjoying it.